Now you can see in my navigation pane that I have the four tables created. Now it's time to create the relationships between these tables. To do that, I'll go up to Database Tools and click on Relationships. That'll bring up the Show Table window, and I can click on the first one, shift-click on the last one to select all four, and I'll press Add, and then Close. And you'll notice that our Relationships screen shows us all the different tables that we've just created. This is set up almost identically to our data model, so that makes it really easy to implement. I'm just going to rearrange this to match the data model I showed earlier. So my customers will go here, my invoices, I'll make this a little wider. Then my line items I showed was down here, and the products go somewhere over here. The layout really doesn't matter. It's just a lot easier to implement if it matches your data model that you've drawn up. Now to create the relationships between these fields, I just drag and drop. I'll find the customer ID here, I'll click and drag, and I'll drop it on top of customer ID in the invoices table. That's going to ask me a couple of things. First, it's going to verify that I've chosen the customer's table, customer ID, and related it to the invoices table, customer ID, so that's correct. And it gives me an opportunity to enforce referential integrity here. I'll check that box on. I'll go ahead and press Create, and that creates a one-to-many relationship between the customers and the invoices. And because referential integrity was turned on, that means that I can't create an invoice and attach it to a customer that doesn't exist. Now let's go ahead and create the relationship between invoices and line items. To do that, I'll click on Invoice ID and drag and drop it on Invoice ID down here. And it doesn't matter which direction you do this in. I could have started in the Line Items table and dragged and dropped on top of the Invoices table. Once again, I'll enforce Referential Integrity, say Create, and again, we have a one-to-many relationship here. I can move it around like this. All right, the last one is going to be between Product ID and the Products table Product ID over here. Once again, I'll enforce Referential Integrity, I don't want anybody ordering a product that doesn't exist. We'll go ahead and say Create, and I've got the last relationship made. So there's all of our relationships. I can go ahead and close this screen. And it's going to ask me to save this layout, and I'll say Yes. And now it's time to start adding in some data to our data tables. I'm just going to add in a couple of lines here. I'll add in a new customer and an invoice. To do that, I'll double click on Customers. And the Customer ID is an auto number field. So if I try and type something in there, I'm going to get a little warning ding telling me that I can't fill in this value. Access is going to take care of that one for me. So I'll come over here to the first name field, and our first customer is Michelle. Her last name is Booker. Her billing address is 195 Shadow Hill Square. Press Tab to go to the billing city. The billing city is Chester. Her billing state is CA. And notice if I try and type in a third character, Access won't let me do that because we set this up to only store two characters. So I'll leave it at CA for California. I'll press Tab to go to the billing zip, 96020. So there's our first customer. I can go ahead and close the customers table and create an invoice for that customer. I'll double click on the invoices table to open it up. And again, I cannot fill in the invoice ID because that's an auto number field. So I'll skip it and put in the date. Because I set this up as a date time field, Access gives me a little date picker here, or I can type in a value. I'll just choose the date today, 4-3-2014. For the customer ID field, because we set this up with referential integrity turned on between the invoices table and the customers table, the number that I type in here has to match an existing customer. If I were to type in a two, and we don't have two customers right now, and go over here to method of payment and choose a method of payment from our dropdown list, and try and close this table, I'm going to get a warning message saying that I can't add this record because a related record is required. And it's going to confirm that it's not saving anything. And it's asked if I want to close the database object anyway. I'll say uh, no to cancel out of that. And I'll press the escape key to back out. Now I can go through and fill in this with the right customer ID. So once again, I'll choose the invoice date as today. Customer ID number one, that'll link it to Michelle. The method of payment is going to be from our dropdown list credit card. So now I've created a single invoice for Michelle. At this point, I can close my invoices table, and that record will be saved without any problems. So that's how we start implementing our data model using our table design worksheets inside of Microsoft Access.